Robots of all shapes and sizes are already a big part of many different industries, from automotive manufacturing to electronics, aerospace, and logistics. And now that the artificial intelligence boom is underway, a debate about the usefulness of humanoid robots versus task-specific droids is getting into gear. Meet Digit. This humanoid robot is moving boxes in one of Amazon's warehouses. Jeff Bernstein, not a robot, is the president of the Association for Advancing Automation. Some of the things you can imagine a humanoid doing, agility has been showing, is carrying boxes off a conveyor and taking them somewhere else in the facility. So you can imagine in an auto factory, there's lots of applications where either transporting something or somehow being involved in inspection or, you know, maybe even precision tasks eventually. Lately, artificial intelligence is unleashing robots' ability to think and act more like humans who can handle things like making breakfast. Take Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus. It appears to gently grasp an egg and also get the party started. AI is changing the game in terms of humanoids because of our ability now to communicate with an intelligent form factor that looks like us. So you have humanoids that are walking around on legs like we do, uh, handling packages, performing tasks in a, in a factory, and being able to be smart because of the AI that allows them to learn pretty quickly. Both NVIDIA and Mercedes-Benz are collaborating with robotics maker Aptronic on humanoid robots. NVIDIA's Project Groot will teach Aptronic's Apollo humanoid new and more complex tasks from human demonstrations. The question is with humanoid robots, well, what what are you trying to accomplish with a humanoid robot that you can't already do with a task-specific robot better? Ed Carson, also just a human, is a news editor at Investors Business Daily. So you could have it somewhat limited as what you're doing. So it's not too confusing, it's not too complex, the services are flat. You, know, you want to make it as easy as possible, but you also want to have it probably doing a few different things. Otherwise, why not just have one robot or two robots um, that are task specific. I don't know, Rosie from the Jetsons made it all look pretty easy. It did seem pretty easy, but I also think that right now humanoids are more like C-3PO. It's like, what exactly does that robot do? I mean, you know, it's sort of awkward. C-3PO is sort of like the least useful robot in Star Wars. And I think we, we just feel like if a robot has a face, we're gonna treat it differently and think it's more intelligent and more useful. The key is ROI. Are we going to get something that does the job at a price point that makes sense and delivers what we expect in terms of reliability and quality? Where humanoids may work is filling labor shortages from population declines around the world. Retiring baby boomers who don't wanna do the kind of jobs that humanoids could do all day long, carrying heavy boxes, doing repetitive jobs. In Korea and China, the working age population is falling rapidly. 75% of countries are predicted to fall beneath population replacement birth rates by 2050, according to the Lancet Medical Journal. I'm getting up there. Maybe when I'm older, I would like to stay in my home and not go to an assisted living facility. Maybe a humanoid could do the cooking and the cleaning and, you know, if need be, carry me from one room to the next. There are applications that potentially make sense in our daily lives elder care being one. Experts believe just one fully built autonomous AI humanoid robot will cost well above $20,000 and could be a new normal in such workplaces as warehouses within the next few years. For over a decade, Amazon has utilized robots in warehouses. The e-commerce giant touts it's the world's largest manufacturer of industrial robots and has deployed more than 750,000 mobile robots across its worldwide operations. In 2022, one billion packages, that's about one-eighth of all the orders delivered worldwide, were sorted by Robin, one of Amazon's robots. Robin's output appears to far outpace that of Digit, which is one reason why the rollout of humanoid robots may take a while. 
stopped, you know, it's sort of like flying cars. Where are my flying cars? You know, like, oh, it takes forever. But, you know, we are getting close to flying cars and other things happen before you know it. There's all sorts of things that people didn't think would happen, didn't even think about 20, 30 years ago, and then they take off. But then will humans accept humanoids as a part of their daily lives? Are they going to be afraid? Do they have images of iRobot and the Terminator movie in their mind? In the U.S. they might. Maybe in other countries like Japan, where there's a more favorable cultural response to robotics, it'll be different. But I question this. So I'm on the skeptical side, but I do see the potential. That's hopefully for robots and humanoids only to help humans, not displace them. If we get to a point where somebody says, well, you know, cost of labor has gone up and we really want to just implement all robots and have a lights out factory and get rid of all the people, that would be a concern. That would be a concern to me. And I believe that these technologies are there to augment people. And that so far, the robotics industry has a great track record of augmenting people and creating more jobs, better jobs, safer jobs, higher paying jobs. We don't want to see people whose intent is to end that trend for robotics by replacing people. For Investors Business Daily, I'm Meredith Heyman.